Hello, I am Dr. Sanish, welcoming you to another edition of Anesthesia Tools. The job of an anesthesiologist is often compared with that of a pilot who flies the aircraft. The similarities are in plenty. When the flight takes off, pilot finds any technical issues during flight, the outcome may be disastrous. So is the case with anesthesiology. So we anesthesiologists take meticulous attention to make sure that our anesthesia machine and resuscitation equipments are well set before the start of the first case of the day and we do a shortened version of this exercise in between cases. Come let us see what is our routine anesthesia machine checklist procedure. Our modern anesthesia workstations have pneumatic components as well as electrical components. So our machine checklist starts with making sure that our machine is plugged in, switched down and adequate battery backup is ensured. Check the high pressure system. Check with a tuck test that each pipeline is correctly seated and in the appropriate wall outlet designated for the specific gas. See that pipeline pressure gauges read 50 PSIG of pressure. Right now cylinder pressure gauges should read 0. Now identify the cylinders by color coding or label and ensure proper mounting. All the cylinders should be in off position. Regarding oxygen cylinder, you need to open the oxygen cylinder. See that the cylinder pressure gauge reads at least half full or 1000 PSIG after opening the cylinder. After that, keep the oxygen cylinder closed. Next step is checking for circuit leak in the anesthesia machine ventilator circuit. The machine as of now is in the off position. Select the back selector switch to ventilator mode. Take the circuit, occlude the distal end or the patient end of the circuit and then using oxygen flash inflate the bellows and keep the circuit occluded. Make sure that the pressure gauge shows less than 15 centimeters of water and the fall in the bellows is less than 100 ml per minute. Next step is low pressure leak test. Before you start low pressure leak test, make sure that all the flow meters are off, all the vaporizers are off and you need low pressure leak test device. This is also called as universal leak test. This has got a suction bulb and an inlet. And the first step will be to check this equipment for any leak. First, make a good finger seal at the inlet and repeatedly squeeze the bulb so that this bulb is collapsed and this bulb should stay collapsed for at least 60 seconds. Change the back selector switch to back mode. Change the circuit selector to auxiliary circuit and then attach the leak test device. Squeeze repeatedly so that the bulb is collapsed and make sure that the bulb stays collapsed for at least 10 seconds. You have to repeat the low pressure leak test after opening each vaporizer one at a time. After the leak test, see that the circuit selector is switched back to closed circuit mode. At this stage, you can turn the machine on. Check that flow rotometers operate smoothly and bobbins move freely throughout its range. Now checking for anti-hypoxia safety features. Increase the nitrous oxide flow. Note that oxygen flow meter automatically turns on. Now reduce the oxygen flow up to zero. Note that nitrous oxide also automatically comes down to zero. See that the machine shows FAO to more than 21% throughout the full range. To check for oxygen failure alarm, set the oxygen nitrous oxide and air flow to mid range Disconnect the oxygen pipeline. See that nitrous oxide and oxygen flows reduce consistently 
but oxygen flow comes down the last air flow continues and oxygen failure alarm should go off now reconnect the oxygen pipeline next step is to calibrate oxygen sensor navigate using menu bar to oxygen calibration at 21 percent remove the breathing circuit open the panel as per the manufacturer's instructions identify the oxygen sensor remove it by rotating counterclockwise and expose the sensor to room air push the knob to start calibrating it takes a while to complete the calibration once completed reinstall the sensor rotate clockwise Now replace the panel carefully. The oxygen analyzer is calibrated at 21%. Now increase the FAO2 by using oxygen flush and see if the oxygen sensor reads above 90%. Next, we'll check the vaporizers. Check that each vaporizer is adequately filled and not overfilled. Check that each vaporizer is correctly seated onto the back bar. See that the locking mechanism is fully engaged. The control knobs rotate fully throughout the range. Because of uh, locking mechanism, only one vaporizer can be turned on at any time. Check the breathing system for correct configuration, inspiratory limb, expiratory limb and check the soda lime canister whether it is exhausted. Next step, change the ventilator parameters depending on the first phase of the day, appropriate settings. And now you take the test lamp and connect it to the patient end of the circuit. The back selector switch should be changed to ventilator mode. Minimum oxygen flow meter settings are there. Using the flash, fill the bellows. And now the machine ventilator starts. Check whether ventilator displays correct data. The end expiratory pressure should read zero. Note that the bellow inflates and deflates and check whether the bellow fills completely. Check the correct operation of unidirectional valves. The inspiratory valve rises on inspiration and falls in expiration. The expiratory valve rises in expiration and falls in inspiration. Now disconnect the test lamp. Check whether disconnection alarm is working. Now we will check the manual ventilation system. Test lamp is connected. Increase oxygen flow to around 5 liters per minute. Set the back selector to back mode. Set the APL valve to 30 and ventilate manually. Check for inflation and deflation of the test lung by way of uh, appropriate field of resistance and compliance. You have to check again for the functioning of the unidirectional valves. To test the back circuit for leak, remove the test lung, occlude the patient end of the circuit, close the APL valve and using minimum oxygen flows 
using oxygen flash pressurize the circuit to around 30 centimeters of water and see that it is retained for at least 10 seconds after 10 seconds open the APL valve and see that the pressure monitored in the gauge goes back to zero now we can check for auxiliary oxygen by occluding the auxiliary oxygen outlet the bobbin tip remember to close the auxiliary oxygen flow meter check whether suction source is connected and the suction regulator provides adequate suction See if the scavenging circuit is appropriately connected and switched on. The AGSS indicator should be in the green sector. The machine checkout is complete when you make sure we have the final position and ready to go for the first case. Make sure that all the flow meters are off, your vaporizers are off, APL valve is fully open. Make sure adequate suction, appropriate breathing circuit and mask is attached and you have an alternate means of manual ventilation in case of any equipment failure with an independent source of oxygen. You are ready for the first case. I hope anesthesia residents and postgraduates and young anesthesiologists who practice find this video useful. Before signing off, let me acknowledge the help offered by my friend Siju Sam for making this video possible. It's goodbye, goodbye from Sanish.